next piece we'll be discussing um, is a casta painting. And casta paintings um, are an American phenomenon. Um, oh, it looks so yellow. I'm so sorry about that. Um, it depicts, um, we see a, 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 fam a family unit. Um, so it usually depicts, well, it always depicts a mother and a father and usually one or two children. So um, it's called a Costa painting, C-A-S-T-A. -A. I have it written in the next slide. Costa, Costa painting. Costa or cast. And so we're seeing a mother, a father, um, and the child. Um, some art historians think that it might um, be connected to the idea of the Holy Family, right? Um, Mary, Joseph, and, and the child. It, like a of a yes and no. So it, 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 it only, it, the only religious influence that I would say is that, right, in, in just the trio. Um, here we're seeing four. You're probably thinking you just said three. There's four. Sometimes there are two children. In this case, um, one of the children is not their children. So this is a servant child carrying their baby. So I just wanted to point that one out. But sometimes we will see a girl and a boy. When you said Costa painting is cast, is that what you said? Costa painting cast, social, so it's a like social, social yeah, it's a social okay. cast, yeah. Yeah, no, I'll, I'll go more into that. I'm just giving like the very quick overview, right? So we're seeing mother, of, mother child, Casta, cast painting, pintura de Casta in Spanish. Um, and what they're doing is, is that, um, they're labeling and identifying the different types of racial mixtures that are occurring in the Americas. And one thing that you always see in a Casta painting is text. And depending on the painter, it'll be more extensive text um, than in others, but it will always say the mother's race, the father's race, and what the child would be called. So what the mixing of those two groups is called. It's kind of pseudoscientific when you think about it. Um, they were commonly produced in sets of 16, beginning with white, ending in black. So the first lineage is always a Spaniard and a noble indigenous woman. And so we're creating our first truly American being would be a mestizo, right? So we're seeing two two mixes of the two races. So we have the mestizo emerging from this mix. So it always begins here with that. Um, depending on who the painter was, they would be painted in individual canvases. So we'd have 16 individual canvases. Sometimes we'll have one large, just gridded piece. Is it documentary or is it for purposes of oppression? <laughs> Right, so the, the closer you are to number one, the better for you, or? So it has to do with being obsessed with documenting and knowing what people will look like when you mix. Um, so when you think about it, it's, it's oppressive and racist when you really start thinking about it deeply. Oh, that is definitely a step below white and white. Yeah. So the highest would be um, Espanol or Spaniard, right? Right before that, but sorry, right beneath that would be um, a Creole who is a full-blooded European born in the Americas, right? So there's a distinction even between that. Doesn't matter if you're of European descent, but if you're born in the Americas, you're already a step below your parents or your peers if they're immigrants. Um, and then after that, then I guess the third tier would be a mestizo, because your father is European and your mother is indigenous, but 
In this case, in this case, they're showing her as a, as a noble woman. And so we're seeing her very beautifully dressed. She's wearing, um, she is wearing an ind indigenous attire, um, but it is wealthy, noble, right? It's a noble dress that she's wearing. Um, yes. Um, if we're talking about this area of the world at this point, are we calling it Mexico? Or are we calling it the Americas? This is New Spain. This is New Spain. Okay. I'm sorry. I I, I call it um, everything. Sometimes. Is there a date that, that the name changes from New Spain to? When we have the War of Independence, I'll start. I, I'll actually, I will. I'm, I actually have those dates in. So when, once we have independence, I'll start referring to it as Mexico. Cool. Specifically, so this is in the region of. Um, what was I going to say? Um, so we'll see the pure-blooded European, right? Will always hold this preeminent. They'll always be at the top of the strata. Um, we see the mother, so we, with the father is, is, he is wearing makeup, if you're wondering. <laughs> Dad is wearing makeup and a powdered wig. <laughs> He's probably wearing high heels too, even though we're not seeing his feet. So they're both showing, wearing attire of, of very wealthy people within their own group. Yes, yes, so this is a, an indigenous dress. If she were Spanish, she'd be wearing probably like a high necked, okay. like something a lot, uh, co would cover her more and would be less loose. The, the huipil is kind of a slightly loose. It's very colorful too. We're seeing it's an indigenous textile, mm -hmm. right? This is not a European textile. European would probably be a brocade. What did you call it? <laughs> I called it Ahuipil. So that is spelled H U I P I L. Huipil. So it's a traditional indigenous garment. Uh, that, that's how it would be called in present day Mexico or Central America. H U I P I L. Wish I had a blackboard. Some things I forgot to throw in. Some terms I wrote, others I forgot. I just, they just kind of come out. Would it be inappropriate at that time period for her to wear the entire of a European woman? I don't think so. I don't think so. But it wouldn't give us no. the message of who she is. Yeah, but this is yet another marker of, right, she's not quite one of us. And in, and in the bibliography I gave you, I've cited, there's several, but there, there's one really important one um, written by actually by the LACMA curator, by Ilona Katsu. Um, I found a really bad, somebody actually scanned it. There's a really bad PDF copy of it out in Google. Um, I'm not promoting that, but once in a while. Um, so there's actually a really bad copy of it out in, um, in the interwebs. Um, and they talk about the different types. So some of these go more in depth still, and they'll even show fruit, mm -hmm. so flora fauna of the region. And those are really fascinating. And they will list out these items, because in Europe, nobody would know what, I don't know, a pineapple or a coconut were, you know? And this is extremely exotic, rare. And so they're, they're, they're identifying everything, categorizing everything. I was looking online to see other things they show, you know, with African men too. Is this kind of the beginning of that idea, or was there already some kind of a tradition of, of this kind of racial hierarchy? Oh, racial hierarchies have existed so since before that. But documenting items is something that I believe predates this, but at the time. So this is kind of the heyday. So this is. So colonialism connects really strongly in Europe with collecting. And so we're starting to see private collections emerging. And of course, they've existed before, but of exotic items. 
and you catalog and categorize these. So what we think about now as a museum registrar or a librarian um, were nascent kind of ideas at this time. And you having a collection that people would come and visit and see how awesome and wealthy you were because you could afford to buy the, either buy this from someone who brought it or go and get it um, was something that was very popular among the nobility. And this will eventually evolve into what we now know as art museums or different or, um, or museums in general. In London, we'll have cabinets of curiosity, mm -hmm. right? So did this image go back to Spain to show what would happen? So these were collected both by um, people in, high-ranking people in the Americas, but a lot of them were um, gifted back um, to Europeans. Or if you served um, in some position in the Americas for a while and then moved back, you'd get this like your parting gift, right? This would be your Rolex. I'm retiring. Um, a span yeah it's a type, it's a type. yeah so this wasn't, okay. yeah and we're looking at just a single a single yeah. one uh, I'm not sure why maybe it was it would have been too confusing why they didn't give you a whole set of them for the for the class um, but they were they were made as sets of mostly you'll usually see 16 of them um, there are um, there's some really beautifully made <laughs> Some ones like this one, um, we'll, we'll see different types, but um, these were highly desirable, collectible items. And it's supposed to be didactic at the same time? Like, yeah. Okay, that's fantastic. Yeah. Um, when you say 16, I'm just trying to find, so this would be a Spaniard and a mestizo. This is one. But then why we have the child? So then he would be one married to a mestizo or married to a... Oh, probably, yeah. So these start breaking mestizo. down. Yeah, so these start breaking down the different racial mixtures. Um, it almost becomes this kind of obsession of being to identify the other, right? And kind of not letting people pass, almost, if you think about it to, if, in relation to like US history, right? Um, South. Um, so how big are these? They vary in size. Um, I don't have a, oh, I don't have a size for this one. So they vary in size. Um, the one I saw was maybe about that, the size of this, of this guy back here. Um, yeah. But then we'll have the one that's a single board or canvas that has the 16, and those would be bigger. So these are, this is a huge collection if you think about it. Even if it were a smaller piece like, like this, it would still be 16 that you have. So they're meant for, if you think about it in that way, it, it goes into somebody who is wealthy's home, right? Because you need that space to exhibit this. So you're a commoner. One, can't afford to commission it. And two, just won't have the space where to hang these. So the bottom corner is indigenous with indigenous with indigenous justice. Yeah, uh, African. Because it's not, because it also talks about, so here we're seeing the indigenous mixing, but remember we're bringing the African transatlantic uh, slave trade. So we're having slaves um, being brought in. Most of them, so most of them were commissioned by viceroys or very high ranking people. Um, what was I going to say about um, race? Oh, some of them, so some of them are really fascinating in that. They'll show you the clothing actually connects back to your racial or ethnic group, but also your ranking within society. All of, some of them will have that plus behavior. So you'll actually see them interacting. And what they suggest by these is the more mixed you are, the more violent you are. And so you'll see a lot of them when there, where there's a black wife, she'll be beating the husband. So there'll be domestic abuse. Um, so they're connecting. So again, it's, it's pseudoscience, right? Like, 
this is how these people behave when you mix these different classes. This is what you get. And so you'll start their clothes to look simpler, more deteriorated. Um, some of them will depict, this one has a very simple background. Some of them will depict very elaborate um, domestic spaces so that you see how they would live. Um, and so of course you start seeing the house poorer and poorer. But like I said, their, their, their moral fiber degrades is what they're trying to say. Um, as uh, the more mixed, the more impure you are. It's creepy. And, and it's creepy and it's fascinating it and it's weird. Oh, definitely has some, some probably. Very. A mestizo will, will socially rank higher than an indigenous child. Yeah. I mean, your parents will, will come from a more educated, wealthier background. You'll have more access to things. Um, a lot of the indigenous kids weren't even allowed to go to schools. A lot of famous writers and artists in Latin America will be um, mestizos or creoles. And the Revolutionary Wars will be led by a lot of them. Because they'll have acts, not full access. So it, it'll come from this struggle of kind of having access, but not fully, and I want it, kind of. Um. So there's a close up, just because the colors are prettier. And it's pixelated again, I'm sorry, but of the mother's jewel, right, she has jewelry on, um, a headdress. Um, and then we see the little indigenous boy carrying the, the fat baby. There's a difference. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you look at the little boy, he's you can tell he's not. One another thing that I thought is funny, um, the parents are slightly plump, mm -hmm. and I mean, if you've looked at colonial portraiture in the United States and in Europe, that's something that's really important. Being able to show that you're well fed. You're pale and you're well fed, right? You don't work out in the sun and you eat really well. No, now, actually, we were, my students were talking about that, right? So how now you want to show you're super skinny because you, you work out and you tan. So now it's the opposite. Yeah. So like you mentioned that this is sort of pseudoscience. These were absolutely meant to be serious. Now we call them pseudoscience, but at that time they were meant to be very serious. So at that time there was no way it was thought of as caricature. No. No, at the time, this is, I mean, they're types, right? It's not necessarily depicting a specific per. I, I wouldn't be able to say, oh, this is Mrs. blah, blah, blah. They're a type. Um, but they were, taking, they were taken very seriously. Now we think about them as pseudoscience, and we're just like, this is extremely racist, right? Abusive. But at that time, no. It was considered to be, sorry, Becky. Yeah, no, I mean, I think it's part of, And, and in Europe, you're cataloging, you would be showing people that you're cataloging your possessions, right? So these are my people, and this is what I own, almost. So cataloging nature, right? That, 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 these, these scientific trips going out to, to find and discover and catalog things, this kind of connects back to that as well. I'm cataloging people, and I'm showing you what I own. And what's unique about these And what is unique and different. Yeah. Yeah. And so he, if you were a viceroy who decides after 
you retire that you're going to go back to Europe, you can tell everybody, oh, these, these are the different people that I used to oh. reign over, I guess, or control. And this is what they look like, and these are the categories. And um, you, know, you said the darker the skin, the more violent. Sometimes. You Sometimes. See, mm -hmm. um, do you ever see sexuality also connected to darker skin? Not, not, not in the ones I've seen, okay. but I don't want to say that that does not exist. Because if with, with African Americans, it does. And um, uh, so I'm going to say that not. And I haven't seen that many of these. I've usually, th there are a couple of sets that are really popular, and those are the ones that usually come up. Um, so if we were going to do research, we would prob probably find, find them becoming more sexual, probably. In this set, no. But. I think her, her jewelry looks European. That lace on top, I have, I have no idea. Does anybody know about the lace on top? I have no idea about that, that, that hat. Her dress is definitely, like when we look at the text, did I drop, when we look at the textile, right, it looks native. The, yeah, so the, the, her jewelry looks European. Her, she, and she's wearing earrings, a necklace, and if you can see, she's wearing a, a bracelet as well that we can see. And his attire, there's no question about it being European, right? That red jacket with frilly, real, beautifully lace, frilled. Um, uh, and yes, so he has a hat under his hat, uh, arm, he had that very handsome wig on. <laughs> full, full makeup. It's so funny, she's not wearing anything, but he has a full face of makeup, right? How, how um, gender norms have changed. If we saw someone walk in like that, we'd be like, he is crazy. Yeah. Would a man like this that engages in sexual activity, would he, most people be seen as less? Would he be looked down upon? I mean, visually, I feel like he's, he's beautiful European, but in a society, would he have been? She's a noble indigenous okay. woman. So she's not necessarily seen as someone who's beneath him. Oh. Right? Mm -hmm. As Becky mentioned, there's these parallels between okay. the stratification of societies, and they're similar. And so in her case, um, she is, she's a noble woman. So she's not necessarily seen as beneath him. Their child, unfortunately, will be seen as Mm -hmm. Some suggest yes, because marriage would be expected, but of course there were many relationships that were not, that were not mm -hmm. sanctioned by marriage. So. Yeah, when you think about it, sometimes it doesn't make any sense because they were so religious and it's so important, but still I think that marriage is actually more important today than it used to be, even though it, a lot of people will think that there's you know, a lot of loss of faith today in comparison to back then. Mm -hmm. so. Should we? Hopefully, yeah, because we need to get through a few. Thank you, Becky. <laughs>